I am a huge believer of Apple Maker's keyboard builds. They always use above average performing switches and they do not just settle with regular case fittings. But there's one con to this keyboard that may not appeal to some competitive gamers. So let's get on with the review and watch till the end so you're informed. This is a gasket-mounted tri-mode wireless keyboard with a battery rated at 4,000 mAh. This has a fully customizable 1.14-inch screen that allows you to upload a GIF or an image. Just download the Apple Maker Custom Image tool, and it's pretty easy, pretty simple to do. I made a video dedicated to customizing your Apple Maker screen, by the way. This has a dedicated volume knob that's relatively silent and has ample feedback when twisted up or down. Looking at the manual for more specs, this has a full key rollover or zero interference with keystrokes, so you press all buttons at the same time and all will register. Only issue here is its pulling rate at 500Hz, even at wired. I have been using the TH80 Pro from Apple Maker with pulling rate also at 500Hz, but I don't see any issues with latency. But ultra competitive gamers out there might have an issue with this. Now, on to the switches and physical attributes. My unit came with the Apple Maker Mulan Switch. They feel like Wisteria switches, but a tad bit quieter, just a little. I like how it adds more thought to the keyboard, and we will explore if tape modding this will improve its sound. I tore this down in this video, so go check the chapters below and skip freely if that's what you're after. Just give me a like or a sub and we're good. By the way, the links will be in the description as well, to the product and to its software. Many other links down there. Inside the box, you get the keyboard itself, cable, extra Mulan switches, a keycap switch puller, and its documentation. Its cable isn't just a regular rubber-coated cable, but also has cloth weaved around it. The aluminum knob has little wobble to it and isn't noticeable when twisting. Plus, it's very easy to remove. For the body of the keyboard, there's a level of hollowness to it, which isn't all that bad as this contributes to its overall sound profile. Listen here. I hear no creaks when twisting the keyboard, so all good here. The feet are standard feet with rubber stuck underneath with two levels to choose from. Now, did I miss anything? Comment your questions down below and let's move on. Keycaps are in cherry profile and made with dice sub PBT. Stabilizers sound quiet out of the box and are lubed, which is always expected from Apple Maker keyboards. The stabilizers do not wobble and are firmly placed. Listen here. This is one of the reasons that greatly justifies the price and value of Apple Maker's keyboards, which is why one of my main keyboards is the TH80 version 2 from Apple Maker themselves. Now, before I get ahead of myself, let's first listen to the keyboard and how it sounds. Onto the linear Mulan switches, I personally like the thocky, creamy stock sound that these switches contribute. This has a 47 gram actuation force and a 60 gram bottom out force with a pre travel of 2 millimeters. This is built with a PC upper housing, nylon bottom housing, and palm stem. This keyboard is offered in two color variants the brown retro looking theme and the pink modern looking theme. You may also choose from four different pre lubed switches. I like how this keyboard gives off a premium retro vibe to it that just looks clean and old at the same time. And looking closely at the case, you will notice the ABS textured sandy coating and having a look around the keyboard, there's no branding anywhere. Great job, Apple Maker. And thank you for staying consistent. As for the Christmas lights, you get 18 RGB modes and a lot of static colors to choose from. Just press function key and the arrow keys left and right to choose the hue. So I haven't torn this down yet. I believe if I remove these four screws in the four corners of this keyboard, then I can separate its top case from the bottom case. All right, so I've removed one already. Let me take off another. I have to remove this first. Do I have to pry anything off? <gasps> I might break it. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, you're gonna have to push this top case a little bit down before pulling it out. So I'm gonna try that here. I am going to push with my prying tool. Push it down, pull. Come on. Yeah, I got it. There are one, two, three clips on top to pry off. At the sides, you don't have any clips. Push it down. Okay, got it. Ta-da! All right, did I damage the board? I didn't! I didn't damage the keyboard! Now as for the teardown, once you get the top case off, there will be two cables holding down the PCB to the bottom case. One for the battery and another for the daughter board. For full disassembly, remove the switches and you separate the plate from the PCB. Now aside from relubing the stabilizers, I believe adding tape mod may make this sound better. So let's try that.
This has a perky flex cut PC plate, which is both a hit and miss for me due to the added workload with snapping switches in. Under that, you get a sandwich foam, an EVA switch pad, and an anti-static PET film. This has a non-flex PCB that accepts both a 3-pin or 5-pin switches. As for the LEDs, they are south-facing, which is standard to custom keyboards nowadays. One huge pro is that this has screw-in ports for screw-in stabilizers. So thank you very much, Apple Maker. Under the PCB, you get foam and silicone. Silicone is much more dense and pricey versus just foam, which then again justifies the price of Apple Maker's Shadow S. Moving on to the software, this is VIA compatible, which is downloadable online. I will leave links to the software and to Apple Maker's shop below, so go check them out. In VIA, there are lots of customization options from macros to layers to lighting. Just download the JSON file of the Shadow S from Apple Maker's website. And as usual, links are also in the description. For screen customizability, I made a video for that and I'm putting that somewhere around this frame. So go check that out so you'd know how to customize before you buy. Might I have missed anything? Comment down below and do not forget to not subscribe.